Chapter 27 The cookies. The big chocolate chip cookies. The cookies I was standing in. I ate two of them in my piano lesson, and he watched me with such a strange smile on his face. He watched me eat the cookies with so much excitement, and he didn't take his eyes off me until I had eaten every last crumb. I thought about how heavy they were, how rich. I ate two of them on the afternoon before I shrank. What did he put in those cookies? Some kind of shrinking ingredient? Suddenly, I put it all together. Why didn't I realize? Mr. Pinker's doll town. The little houses and stores and buildings in his back room. He didn't want me to see them. Of course he didn't want me to see them. Because that's where he planned to keep the kids he shrinks. The kids he shrinks with his cookies. Kids like me. He planned to keep us in those little houses. My teeth were chattering. My whole body shuddered. My knees started to fold and I almost fell off the cookie tray. Mr. Pinker seemed so nice, so kind. But it was all an act, an act to trap kids like me. So we could live with those dolls in his tiny doll houses? I had to get away from there. I couldn't let him see me. I had to get home. I told my parents about Mr. Pinker and his cookies. I had to show them what he did to me. I turned and started to the edge of the cookie tray. My plastic shoe got stuck in a ball of cookie dough, and I struggled to pull it out. Mr. Pinker reached for the tray. Then, to my horror, he lifted the tray off the counter. Still talking into the phone, he swung the tray into the air. No, Mr. Pinker, please, no! I cried. He didn't hear me. He didn't see me. He pulled open the oven door. I felt a blast of heat. Mr. Pinker, no! I gazed around. Could I jump off? No, no way. Waves of heat rolled over me, burning hot, burning my face. Pinker swung the cookie tray down and shoved it into the oven. 28, next time.